Join us now, Kara Murphy, Kestra Investment Management CIO. Um, Kara, I guess just most important for most people, is this a, a reflex rally in an ongoing bear, or is it turning into something more than that with the S&P well above the October lows? Is it, is it still at a point where you'd buy it, or you, are you worried we're out over our skis at this point? I would put us more in the cautious camp. I mean, we've seen the market try to walk this tightrope between assuming that uh, rates are going to start to come down in the back half of the year, which is good for risk assets, and economic demand is not going to fall off a cliff, which would be bad for risk assets. The challenge is that typically the Fed doesn't start to cut rates unless there's some sort of crisis. So the question is, what happens between now and when the when the market thinks that Fed's going to start cutting rates? Um, that's going to precipitate that crisis. So who is the Fed going to come in to rescue? And what's made that even more difficult is this persistent wage inflation. We've seen other types of prices starting to decelerate and come down, but wages have been remarkably sticky for a couple of months earlier this year. We had some signs that wages, wage inflation was starting to decelerate, and then more recently it ticked back up again. And that wage inflation, it's running over 6% across demographics, across regions, and I think that makes it very difficult. Hey, Kara, can I read you something? This is from Austin Goolsby, actually wrote this on Twitter just a day ago. He said, be wary about using wages as a leading indicator for inflation. So many papers have shown wages are actually a lagging indicator of prices. Basically, if wages are stickier, he writes, than prices, which the micro data on frequency of price changes suggests, then when shocks hit, prices rise first, wages later. Does that make sense to I you? would actually agree with him, but I think he should be preaching to the Fed, because what the Fed is telling us is that they're watching it, it, wages. It's very important to them, and they're going to respond to that in terms of monetary policy. So we can talk all we want about wages being lagging, but the fact is it's partly driving Fed policy, and that's what's most important to the market. The, uh, that leaves, I guess, bonds and crypto for you if you're cautious. <laughs> uh, what, what, do you, what would you do, Car? I mean... How far out would you go? Uh, corporates? Would you, what, as an investment officer, what would you be urging clients to do to, to, to balance so on risk? The margin, with, yeah. We do see more opportunities on the fixed income side. And so, so think about all the bad news that the fixed income market in general has digested over the last you know, year plus. We've got an extraordinarily tight and fast moving Fed. We have a lot of pessimism. When we look at risk in the bond market, it's you know several deviations, standard deviations above the normal level of risk in the market. So we think taking a little bit more duration risk is appropriate, taking a little bit of corporate risk, particularly on the high grade side where we think those companies are much sort of more well insured for any more weakness in economic growth. Um, and we think we can actually find a fair amount of value there. Yields are also much higher than they were over a year ago. So you can actually be paid to take that risk. So then you you don't really see the normal uh, return from equities that that historically we would get. You, you think that there is some there's the risk outweighs trying to get 7 or 8% a year, you'd rather stick with 4 or 5% in the fixed income. At this point, yes. And again, we wouldn't head for the hills. We would just be a little bit underweight on the equity side, and we would sort of take in your horns a little bit. You know, you mentioned earlier being over your skis. What you want to do is make sure that you have exposure to equity markets, but you're not in those really frothy areas. So, for instance, we've lightened up on the small cap side. We've looked for opportunities outside the U.S. where we find that there are lower valuations, higher dividend yields, more earnings pessimism built in. So there are areas of value that you can find in there, but you don't want to go to the most frothy areas of the stock market. 